Dubai. He gets to go all, to all these different countries. So you couldn't have Price, you know, keep flying on on an easy jet or something all the time. <laughs> yeah, <to laughs> that's South, true. Southwest Airlines all the time. It does keep it really fresh. Uh, because you know you're able to jump around to different scenarios and everything, and it sacrifices the narrative a little bit, but it keeps everything changing. And just when you're getting bored with doing infantry stuff, it'll say, "Okay, he, well, here's a, a, a sniper thing, or it's for you to do, or okay, it, here's a, you know, act as the get on the minigun for this helicopter." And it breaks those up and has just a little bit of every little experience like that it peppered throughout the whole game. I did have a little bit of a problem with one part of the single-player campaign. Starting with original Modern Warfare, there's always kind of been like that one place in the game that kind of came out of nowhere and was a little bit shocking. And in the first game, you know, it was crawling out of the helicopter, dying of radiation poisoning. By the way... Spoilers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, no one plays a single player in yeah, Modern yeah. Warfare. Are you kidding well, me? I, I don't figure that's such a big deal. And in Modern Warfare 2, you know, they gave you the option when you started up the game. Like they said, hey, there's a thing here that you're not going to like. If you don't want to do this, we won't make you play this mission. It was the no Russian mission where you have to go into this airport and just mow people down. Just, you know, regular old people, not soldiers or anything as part of this terrorist act. Well, in this game, I felt like the thing that they put in there was really unnecessary. Like, I understand why they did it. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Okay, what was I, it? I, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna, anybody skip ahead five minutes if you don't want to hear this. It was the point where they had the guy videotaping his wife and daughter, and the little girl runs up to the truck, and then the truck explodes on her. Oh come on! How is us? Ah, it was, that a, was fucking nothing. Yeah, but there's nothing compared to Modern Warfare 2 where you're going Columbine shooting loads of people. It's just, it, it was, was like, yeah, exactly. But it was, it was just unnecessary. Like, it didn't, it was a cheap shot, in my opinion. Like, it wasn't, it didn't add anything to the story. It wasn't like a major plot point. It wasn't like that guy with the camera or that little girl were going to come back later on in the story and mean something. It was just a way to, to kind of like punch at you in a real gut level. Without any with any real story significance behind it, like the game would have been exactly the same without that added in, and I think that it kind of irks me a little bit. You know what? I'm surprised the British press didn't catch this because uh, there was a lot of controversy. Uh, one of the action scenes is taken during the London Underground, where you have like a a, a train chase or whatever you call it, and a lot of people were upset because of the July seven London bombings that happened. And they're like, oh, this is completely unnecessary to have like a, an action scene taking place in London Underground. I was like, okay, but that's nothing compared to uh, you know the, this American tourist like videotaping his uh, you know wife and kids being blown up by a, a car bomb. But I didn't think it was that controversial compared to Modern Warfare Two, where you are sh- you you are told to shoot hundreds of civilians well enough enough with this single player nonsense let's get to the let's get to the 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 reason that everybody actually came to play modern warfare the multiplayer uh who played multiplayer yeah uh, there's video evidence of us getting our asses handed to us so (laughs) i i I played uh spec ops and uh survival kevin no i I didn't play I, i was playing skyrim (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i can't really fault you for that all right well um having played the previous modern warfare i'll just talk a little bit about the changes they made to multiplayer it's largely the same uh, it's largely the same experience that you got out of modern warfare one and modern warfare two um they've integrated a few of the changes they made in like black ops but the main thing right now is that they've added a, a kind of a further level of customization with your kill streaks and weapon customization and things like that it's, I mean, for anybody who's played the game before, the new changes are going to be immediately apparent. Um, I didn't play it all that much, so I, I had to kind of look hard at it and, and think back to how Modern Warfare 2 was. But the thing, more important than that, though, is that, you know, as, a, as a, another loading bar public service announcement, if you don't play Modern Warfare multiplayer, don't start here, for the love of God. Because I went online and got my ass just wiped up and down the wall for a good 10 hours straight trying to figure <laughs> yeah. out what was going on. And, man, I thought this maybe is... I'll get some sort of routine that I can do, you know, <laughs> go over here, get this weapon, hide in this corner, throw a grenade at this point. No, everything I tried, I could not get anything that was successful. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And then when I thought back to, okay, what did I like about Modern Warfare 2? All I could remember was dropping the controller and crying. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I played for a while and I kept getting shot in the back. And so 
as as that happened more and more often, you know, it's like you see a guy, you're shooting, oh, now you're dead, and here's the kill cam, it was a guy behind you. And it got to the point where I was so paranoid that I was essentially just moving forward, but I was just spinning in circles the entire time, trying to figure <laughs> out if there's somebody behind me. Because, you know, I turn around and there's nobody there, but oh, wait, shit, now there's somebody, oh, god damn it, and just... Yeah. Well, I'm I'm like whenever somebody runs at me, I, I'm just like Stevie Wonder with an AK-47. <laughs> I just pull the trigger and kind of spray it in the general direction, and then I'm dead. I went back That's and it. actually used the new uh, used the new replay theater function to just take a look at how other people were playing to see if I could figure out what it was that I was doing wrong. And I think it's just yeah, that, this. That- that's like there being video evidence of me getting a swirly in junior high. Like, yeah, let's go back and watch that again and again and again. Well, with Call of Duty Elite now, you can track all of your stats about how poorly you do. Minute by minute, oh, yeah. second by second of every match you play. Let's talk about that for those OCD lunatics who don't realize that Skyrim is out. <laughs> oh, you mean the ones who are probably writing in the comment section, huh, fucking noobs. In oh, yeah, we're, we're going to get so eviscerated for this. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty Elite is basically Call of Duty's kind of uh, stat tracking, friend making, video posting, kind of Facebook meets Steam with a whole bunch of background stat tracking stuff built into it, leaderboards, tournaments, and all kinds of stuff that you can sign up for. And it's built right into Modern Warfare 3. Oh, and it costs money. Let's not forget that. The, actually, there are two tiers of it. There's a paid tier, then there's a free tier. You can get all the stat tracking and, and matching up and stuff like that for free. Um, oh, it, it's I don't been, want either one of them. It's never been really clear, but I think that the, what, when you pay for it, what you get is access to uh, the tournaments that, where you could win, like, a Jeep! Or real money, or I don't know, if you're that <laughs> good at Modern Warfare. I don't think there's any threat of me winning a Jeep for my <laughs> skills at this game. I don't even want to see the trat stacking, or the stat, the trat stacking, the stat tracking, because that's just like getting a day. shitty report card and having it shoved in your face. <laughs> like, <laughs> congratulations, we had to make up new low grades because we had to turn to science because we couldn't find an adequate way to rate your shittiness. All I can think of, though, when I, <laughs> when I, when I think, when I describe that, is somebody who, like, gets up, puts on a suit and tie, and then walks out into their living room and turns on their Xbox to play Modern Warfare. Like, you know, you've got, <laughs> you've got professional gamblers. Why not professional Modern Warfare 3 players? Yep, time to make the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to this glorious single player and largely similar multiplayer, we also have this Spec Ops campaign. Um, Nick, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, in Spec Ops, you have like uh, different uh, levels, and you can play uh, either solo or you could play split screen. And it's different, various different missions you can do. Uh, like, for example, one of the missions is that uh, you can actually be uh, the Russian terrorists that capture the, the Russian president. You, so your objective is to get there as quickly as possible. You have to earn enough stars in order to uh, comp- go to level two, in- to, 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 go, to upgrade. And what's cooler is the survival mode, which is kind of like hordes in Gears of War. And uh, where you and a buddy, or we can be by yourself, just have to survive against waves uh, upon waves of uh, Russian soldiers. And of course, they get harder and harder from each wave. So sometimes you'll get those guys just carrying armor to sometimes just uh, helicopters or all of the above. So it, that is that was really cool and it was very addictive. So no zombies this time around, I guess. They're pretty much sticking no, to no. me. No, are you kidding me? That would be unrealistic. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kind of surprised they didn't have that uh, in there at all. Well, that's because it's uh, done by Inf- Infinity Ward. It's not done by Treyarch. Yeah, the Treyarch has always been the one uh, to put yeah. the zombies in their games. So what do you guys think? In spite of all of my uh, complaints and snarkiness about it, I think it's a full price game. There's uh, a lot to like there. I mean, if you like Modern Warfare 2, you're going to love Modern Warfare 3. It's just them taking the formula and refining it and just really putting it against the uh, uh, the whetstone <laughs> and sharpening it and just into the the most the finest point possible. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. The uh, single player is really a badass experience and the multiplayer is great. It's just extraordinarily robust. Even if you suck, you can still have a little bit of fun at it. <laughs> so <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed uh, Mon Warfare 3 much more than the uh... Modern Warfare 2, and um, although I didn't get into the multiplayer, the, the single player experience is uh, fantastic, and uh, and it's nice to see to catch up with your characters and put them through all these situations and stuff. So yeah, I give it a full price. 
Fair enough. Kevin? I really enjoyed the first player experience. The problem is there's so many games out right now that I'm torn between it and playing even Battlefield 3 when it comes to multiplayer. I'd probably go back to Battlefield. To me, it's a full price game. If you're into Call of Duty, you probably already have it. But if you're on the fence about it, I don't know, go buy Skyrim. I don't have anything for you. I mean, it's, We're not it's, doing the Skyrim now. Know, We're doing that later. I know. Hard, everyone, I, everyone's really excited about it. We'll just leave it for later. It's, it's hard to be fair because I haven't seen you play the multiplayer part of the game. I mean, nobody's really listening to me about this anyway. But, you know, storyline, storyline's kind of BS. So that's all I got. Could have used some dragons in it, though. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so what did... What, okay, so how did, that, how did that all equal out? Did you say? I'd say full price. Full price? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna agree with my esteemed colleagues here. Um, it's definitely worth playing from a multiplayer perspective. It's definitely interesting. It's kind of the, like Halo. If you like modern warfare multiplayer, you're probably gonna like what you see here. Um, other than that, it's not doing a whole hell of a lot different. Some really nice little set pieces in the single player, but you know, it's only about eight hours. Kind of forgettable. Still, I think that along with spec ops and multiplayer, it's probably worth uh, worth your full price. But you know what? It got me thinking towards the end of Modern Warfare. Now that all this has been kind of resolved, like, you know, we've already mentioned Mexico taking over the moon, but what I want to know is where's the next Modern Warfare game going to take place? Space, man. It's future warfare. That's the only logical uh, step that they could take with the series. So you're going to take the Battlefield 2142 route and just mechs and flying aircraft carriers and laser guns? I oh, am okay yeah. with I, I, that. I, I want it to be like the, the first alien invasion, the first time we come across an alien species and we just fuck them up, and that's you know, going to be the next modern warfare. So you're saying that you want to watch... You uh, want Resistance, of, is what you're saying. You want Battle no, of actually, Los I, Angeles? I want Battle of Los Angeles, hell yes, yeah. But have it have this same kind of Independence Day feel to it, though. Yeah, they should go back in time to, like, uh, the Revolutionary War, so we can, oh, ki- yeah, we can kill Nick's people. <laughs> right um but uh we, we have to, you know the whole like fire the gun and then you got to put the wadding in and then pour in the black powder that'd be kind of slow oh man could you imagine if we went back how people would freak out people would lose their damn minds if we went back to the revolutionary war it doesn't take the most powerful nations on earth to create the next global conflict just the will of a single man. 